But what we're here to focus on today is the base of the pyramid, the BOP. And this is the majority of people on the planet. This is 4 billion people living on less than $8 a day. Now, these people are uh, traditionally thought of somewhat as passive receivers of aid or of charity. Um, and they're typically sit sitting on the fringes of the economy. Uh, and a lot of the times they have their basic needs, needs left unmet. However, they also have a tremendous entrepreneurial capability. And combined, they actually have quite a strong buying power. So, and not only are they the majority of the, the population today, but uh, they will grow at a much faster rate than the developed world. And by 2050, 85% of the world's population will be in these less developed areas. And so, there's a very important part about including them in the value chain, and you could include them as consumers, because these people have needs that are unmet. Needs for food, for water, for healthcare, for transport, for energy, and so forth. Basic needs. And there's been a lot of innovations focused on meeting those needs. Also important is thinking of them as producers. And, you know, they've been producers, smallholder farmers for a long time now. But the idea is not to connect with them through exploitation, but instead to partner with the base of the pyramid and work together to help improve their productivity and their livelihoods, but also to help business have more sustainable supply chains. And so that's a different way of thinking of them as producers. And then finally, as entrepreneurs, how can business engage with the tremendous entrepreneurial capability of these people in a positive way? This as a development issue led to the uh, Secretary General, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, announcing um, uh, uh, an initiative, a program a couple years back, called Sustainable Learning for All. And this is essentially the framing, it's like the Millennium Development Goals within the energy sector. And it breaks down into, into three specific goals. The first is to double the share of, of renewable energy uptake globally from about 15% today to 30% by 2030 to double the rate of global energy efficiency improvement. We, things do get more efficient naturally. Each new iPhone you, you, you buy normally is a bit more efficient. Um, uh, but by doubling that of only 1.2% annually over 30 years, it has a very large impact on our energy use. Uh, and the third is universal energy access to modern energy services. That's both electrification, but also clean cooking and other forms of energy. And that's um, to go uh, from today uh, about 1.3 billion um, uh, to 2030 unserved and 2030 full, full service coverage and in clean cooking about 2.7 billion. Um, so these are really, these are the customers at the base of the pyramid who are looking for new types of, of energy approaches, services and, and products. What does the world say about Africa? This myriad of countries, cultures, tribes. During the 80s and the 90s, Africa was a problem. Nowadays, Africa is the continent. This is The Economist, the Time Magazine. The only difference is less than 20 years old. One of the best programs that is working in Africa. Why is this one one of the best? Because this one is sustainable. It's a program that we started two years ago. And we decided to convert five million women into entrepreneurs. And that was a challenge. At the beginning, we thought that we needed just to, you know, bring money and resources and do this. But we realized that the first thing that we needed was training. Training was the key. And the second part, assets, money. So we started a program during three weeks. We are bringing this training to these women and we developed their skills. So we provided this kit. This kit with five things. 
First, the trolley. Second, the cooler. Third, the seat. Fourth, the umbrella. And fifth, the product. The cost of this is $400. And the revenues that they get at least is $138 per month. So, with this kit that we gave them, we discovered one thing also. That was the, that was the average before introducing the program. But none of these women did 138 or less. They did more than 200. I guess that, that is linked between, this result is linked between 138 or 200 and the motivation that they have. is a small toilet. It weighs less than 10 grams in the shape of a bag. What is really unique about it is that it's self-sanitizing. It contains urea that actually kills off all the pathogens very rapidly after use. It's single use, which means it's personal. It's really easy to bring along. So it's, you always have a nice new clean toilet every, one, every time you need to go to the toilet. And it's biodegradable, which is really, and it's actually the fact that it's self-sanitizing and biodegradable that makes it very uh, appropriate to reuse as a fertilizer because our excreta and urine contains a lot of nutrients that can be brought back into the soil and actually closing the, the food loop. So why, why is this important in the world? Well. Actually, we have about 40% of the world's population don't have a toilet today. And a whole lot of these people live in urban slums that are growing at a very quick pace. Uh, and in these environments, it's particularly women and children that are the most vulnerable, both from a health and a social perspective. And the whole idea is something that has to do with cooking. It's interesting to see or hear that both Eric and Karin have touched upon a lot of things that I want to say as well. It's just that we are all moving in that basis of the, in the basis of that pyramid. But uh, like people have to use the toilet, they also have to do cooking. And more than three billion people cook their food on an open fire. They do it every day. Most common fuels are firewood, charcoal, or kerosene. And if you look at Zambia, for instance, about 80% of the population actually cook over open fire. If this is not a win-win situation, I don't know what is. Here's a solution. Pellets produced from what is now waste material, stoves, cook stoves, which are suitable for pellets, and that makes the, the, the kitchen there is no electricity. The problem here is that, of course, if there is pellets and no stoves, no one will buy the pellets. If there are, are stoves and you can't find the pellets, no one will buy the stoves. So it has to be a change, actually a policy change, a, a family change, a lot of change that going to be needed here. And we think that it will be helpful to get more stoves into at a very, very low cost. The cost of stove, after all, will cost, there is one outside here, but can I look at The stove will cost about $100, and that's a lot of money for the person who lives in eight dollars. So here's my summary. Indoor climate is better, health will be better, economies will be better, we will get more time, we will save our forest, or at least reduce deforestation. We will save habitats. We will convert waste to useful fuel. We will create tax income, and if we really manage to spread this around, we will also slow down the global warming.